This is the one nutrient that I pretty religiously demand people add to their seed starting setups. And the reason for that is because it is so integral to the adult plant, but it's put on and used right now during the seed starting process, and that is calcium. If you're new to the 17 essential nutrient series, we're going through all 17 essential nutrients and kind of what roles they play, how you even end up deficient, how to correct deficiencies, how they play with each other, all sorts of stuff. So today, obviously, we're talking about calcium. Now, calcium is famously known for causing things like blossom and rot and deformed leaves or stems. Now, the reason for this is because calcium is incredibly important in cell division and elongation. Probably its number one role for a gardener anyways. When we don't have calcium or calcium is in low availability, what ends up happening is we end up with poor cell division and that can come in the form of roots, shoots, leaves, actual physical fruit, you name it. The plant just begins to triage what it thinks is not necessary and sometimes obviously tomatoes make the cut. The deficiency of calcium doesn't always mean it's deficient in the soil, but we'll get into that here in a little bit. The other thing that I think you guys would find quite fascinating about calcium is that it is important for stress. Now, plants get stressed out just like humans do. We can actually see calcium rush to the sites where there is a rip, a tear, some sort of bug bite, that sort of thing. We can see calcium rush to that area. You can think of calcium as the white blood cells of the plant, for lack of a better term. So it's really important kind of in that process as well. And obviously if that's lacking, the plant is not as durable when it comes to a torn leaf or recovery. In nature, calcium deficiencies are few and far between. And the reason for that is because it is so abundant in soil. It's one of the primary things that make up what mineral soil is made of. The only one you may be able to argue this for is sandier soils. Even then, it's probably set up pretty darn well. Um, and that, that's not the case. What does restrict the uptake of calcium, however, is number one, pH. And I've spoken about this at length. If you're wondering if you have a pH issue, this video here is going to teach you how to test for that and then determine what you need to do. But if you don't believe it's a pH issue, it can actually be a excess nutrient issue of a different form. I spoke about this in the nitrogen video, but nitrogen is definitely number one when it comes to harming the uptake of calcium. The other ones can include potassium as well as magnesium. So these being present in the soil in excess or present in the soil and also highly bioavailable due to the pH being in the correct range, they outcompete calcium. And that means the plant is more likely to uptake these in excess and actually cause, in some cases, burn, for lack of a better term, over calcium. We always think more is the merrier when it comes to organic or synthetic fertilizers, but the truth is that's not always the case because the more you put on, the more you play with the balance dynamic between the different forms of nutrients. Now the good news about the competition side is that calcium is not particularly mobile in the soil. It's actually pretty much immobile in the soil, which means when in doubt, flush it out rule for some of those nutrients does apply and it allows you to remove that excessive buildup of nutrient while without sacrificing the reduction of calcium in the actual physical soil. That means you can obviously recover something that has been over fertilized and you think is actually causing the calcium imbalance. Now, the other thing, the other thing we would need to play with here is that if you are in the process of changing your soil or pH, or you've started listening to different hacks, like for example, putting lime in and around a tomato plant to help increase bioavailable calcium. You have to keep in mind that the rules still apply. You can over apply calcium as well. So just dumping a bunch of lime in a potting hole while it it can increase the amount of calcium there. It can restrict the uptake of other nutrients. It's again about balance. You can't overdo it on either side. Now, the reason why I find it really uh, integral to seed starting is because seed starters 
mixes, um, while they do have nutrients in them, the actual physical cell itself, particularly in that beginning stage is so itsy bitsy tiny that it can and likely will run out depending on how long you choose to leave the plants in situ in those little tiny cells before bumping them up. So if you usually let things go a little bit long the tooth, calcium addition to your watering system, uh, however you choose to water is going to be incredibly important. Now, besides the fact that the soil, soilless medium itself is going to potentially lack calcium just because of the sheer volume, there's not enough volume there. The plants themselves also will begin to lack calcium too. So if you are saying to yourself, okay, I'm just gonna start giving the calcium to the tomato or the pepper once it's an adult, you've all, you're already behind the eight ball because the plants themselves actually uptake nutrients, uptake calcium specifically from inception and it has to build up in the plant. It's not mobile in the sense that nitrogen is, it's not cruising all over the plant and distributing itself accordingly. It's very in situ. And I guess you could imagine this in a way solely because if you were thinking about like building cells, cell division, cell structures, calcium is also a part of that. So that goes without saying elongation. If you think of what it, that building block, the physical leaf that you see is made of calcium. And so if it's not there, the plant can't make it. And then there's also no stores or reserves. So you do want to make sure calcium is present from the get go. Now, a great way for this to happen is if you're making your own potting soil, actually adding the dolomite lime can help. You also can just very simply use a bloom formula on your seedlings. You can use half strength, full strength. It's completely up to you what you want to do. I personally would start at just like a regular full strength. And if you start noticing really rapid leggy growth back off on it, I also do believe ideal world, you should be watering with fertilizer every single time you water in those little cells in particular, because it's a soil solution. The water and the nutrient is what's taken up. And if there's no nutrients and water present, it just causes a diluted material, if you will. So if that's the case and you wanna go that route, go for half, do a half dose, and then incorporate that into your watering process. Your seed starting setup is where you can control a lot of factors. Mother Nature kind of, you're at her whim a little bit, but in a seed starting setup, you can control the fertilizer input. Once you've controlled the fertilizer input, the next thing to actually control is the rates of respiration and transpiration because humidity, cold temps, all of these things that actually reduce respiration can and will cause a calcium deficiency because you can think of it as a loop. So the plant uptakes the calcium, it goes through the plant, out the plant, and then back in. So it's a big loop. And if the loop is not able to get out of the leaf via the stomata, then it stays in the plant and it just gets utilized in the plant and no new calcium gets brought in. So to be able to close the loop, if you will, we need a constant transfer of water out of the plant and then back into the plant. And the way to achieve this is to make sure that the rates of respiration are taking place appropriately. So your domes you put over top of your seed starting setups are great initially, but you do want to remove those because excess humidity actually limits the rate of transpiration, the evapotranspiration, the reduction of water in that system. And that's because the water has nowhere to go. It's too humid in that environment. And so because the pool's already full, the plant can't release it. So that's one way you can end up with a calcium deficiency without you even thinking it's happening. The other thing, um, the other way to I guess make this happen is cooler temperatures. So if you have it in a basement, if you say you don't have a, a seed heat mat, these sort of things can and will reduce the rates of transpiration just because it just reduces the growth of the plant entirely. So if we're growing in the basement, we're growing in the garage, we're growing close to a window, 
we want to make sure that we are taking into consideration what the ambient temperature is around that plant. It doesn't have to be extreme. It doesn't have to be like the middle of summer, but you do want it around the 15 to 20 ish mark. Ideally the 20 ish degrees Celsius mark is better, but you can get away with a little bit lower if necessary. Now, if you're wanting some other hacks and tricks on how to seed start when you're busy, like I am myself, you're gonna check out this video right here. And that video is what Google says you should watch. So check it out. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.